Hi guys, my name is Maria and I'm part of the Wizard Sardin team and I'm here to show you uh, how to do a setup on the Liana wallet. So I'm gonna do it on Signets, so it's just easier and uh, faster. So this is the first screen that you see. You see the Creator wallet and you go, this is V5 by the way. Uh, you see the advanced settings. Uh, if I'm, you're doing a Signet just to try it out, you, you choose Signet, Testnet or Rectest. Uh, if you're using with the real Bitcoin and uh, you want to use it as your normal wallet, you just use mainnet and that's the normal version that you're going to see if you install it and download it. So I'm going to use Signet and you have the descriptor type. If you are into that sort of thing, you can choose Taproot because that's what we offer in V5. This is the new version of Liana. We are very proud of it. So if you want to try it out, you can. I'm going to use it with cold card because now we can. So I'm going to do uh, two out of two with these two cold cards. And uh, then the recovery path is going to become a one out of two. So this means that you can uh, sign with both of them in the first primary path. So the one that you use normally in your day to day life. And then after a few months or a few days, if you choose, you can just use one of them. So if you lose any of them, you can even if, and if you still have the other one you should use it as the key so as you can see now i'm gonna set up mine and i have the cold card here i'm gonna do it as i'm gonna put the pin it tells me to wait a little bit and it's starting up okay Okay, so it says cold card is ready to sign spending transactions. So this one already shows up here in my uh, computer. I click on it and it says, please check my device. And I need to choose a fingerprint alias. So I'm going to put the name. So this is my green cold card. Apply. So this is this one. This is the first one I'm doing it. And then I add another one. So as you can see, the threshold is a two out of two. Uh, in the next uh, recovery path, I'm gonna do a one out of two, but in this one, I can, I could have put a one out of two out if I wanted to, or I could do like 50 keys. I don't think it's necessary, so I'm just gonna do two. You know, hardware wallets are expensive, so I'm gonna do this one as well. It's loading. This one is cooler. Looks like a calculator it has the ready to sign option and you and it shows up there yeah it says code card is ready to sign spending transactions so that's when you know your it's good and it shows up here a new code card please check your device I check it and I do a, another fingerprint alliance so this one is my cold card gray. And now I do the same thing as my recovery path, but I just changed the threshold. So I'm gonna use my green cold card first and my second cold card as my second key. I changed the threshold to a one out of two and I added the time lock. So I can do the max of one year and three months and you can change it as number of blocks or you can do it as uh, scrolling the, the time bar. It's very easy. You see this, then you go, you can add another recovery path if you want. I'm just gonna do this because it's simpler and I'll do next now. So this is the descriptor. Since the wallet uses Miniscript, we have a descriptor. So it tells me uh, where the coins are if I ever lose them. So this is cool and we need to copy and save it in a Word document or a Google Drive. You need to save it if you want to give one of your cold cards to, to your family or to a loved one. You, they need to have this if they want to recover the coins at some point. So. It's very important to save this, both for you and for your family, if you want to recover the coins. And then you go next. 
you see the descriptor again, but now it's time for you to select your hardware wallets and check on them to um, re register the descriptor on. So I'm gonna do the green code card first. It says, check my device. I go here, yeah, ready to sign, okay. It says okay. Then I go to my code card, do the gray one. It's waiting, it's waiting. And it tells me the name of the wallet, so it's Liana something something, and then the segwit, and the, it shows me the, um, the descriptor. So I can just see it and see the extend, extended public key as well. And I approve. And it shows here, everything is okay. I have, and I need to click on the button that says I have registered the descriptor on my devices. So everything should be fine now. We go to the fourth part of the setup. Uh, now I get to the Bitcoin node management and I have the two options. So if I have my own nodes uh, running on my computer, I can use it. But if I don't, that's the case of most people, I just use the Liana managed one. So I'm gonna do that. Simpler, it's quicker. And Liana does it for me. Very easy. So it's downloading Bitcoin, Bitcoin Core 26.1. It says download co complete, installation complete, and it gets started. So I'll go next. And it says finalize installation. This process, if you're doing it at home with your Bitcoin node, it takes a longer time. But um, so that's why when you're doing it on mainnet, it's gonna take two, three days and you need to leave your computer open so that it runs and it, it downloads the whole blockchain. Uh, since we are doing it here with the Liana managed nodes and since we are doing it on Signet, uh, it's gonna be much quicker. So I'll say like 10 minutes max. Okay, so now that the Bitcoin D is installed, uh, it just opens up Liana and it's a normal wallet, as you can see. On the home screen, we have the balance. Right now we have none. Then we have the send menu, a normal send with the address, with the description. Uh, you put the amount and you can add the payment as you want. We have the fee rate. Uh, the fee rate is, auto is automatically uh, selects the coins that, uh, that you have uh, as soon as you press on the fee rate. So this is cool. This is a cool setting that we have as well now. Um, the receive um, menu is now different. It doesn't show the QR code. It, uh, you need to click on it if you have that type of wallet. So the coins are gonna show up here as unconfirmed as well on the coin menu. Then I have the transactions, same thing. PSBTs you can import. If you're using a wallet with someone else uh, and they have um, a signing soft uh, hardware, you can just uh, import their own uh, PSBT or you can create a new one. If you create a new one, it's gonna send you to the send menu. So it's just a normal transaction that the other person is gonna uh, sign as a PSBT. So the different part about this, uh, this wallet is that on settings, you have the Bitcoin Core, the wallet, the recovery and the about. If you lose your descriptor that is saved in a document or a drive, you can come to this menu and copy it again. And I also have my uh, two cold cards, the green cold card and the gray cold, cold card that uh, they show up there with the fingerprint alias that I put on them. So you're gonna have them there to see which hardware was you're, you're using on your Liana. And then you have the cool thing, the recovery menu. So this recovery menu is the difference between our wallet and other wallets out there. So the recovery menu shows me the coins that are next to expire or that are already expired and that you can uh, transfer to a different wallet. Uh, so it's gonna show there the coins that are ready to expire and it's gonna say that one of the one of these because I did a one out of two on the recovery path is able to sign it and to put it in a, in a different uh, destination wallet. So I just get an address from a different wallet and I lose one of these. So let's say I don't have the green cold card anymore. I only have the gray one. And I take this and I sign the, the um, coins that I want to send to a new wallet because I lost the, this one. And I need my, my coins, I don't want to lose them. 
So now that we have uh, our balance here, we can see that uh, we have 0.13 Bitcoin. Then we have the one month left before uh, first recovery path. It's going to have the time that you have before the recovery paths are available. Uh, if, if it becomes available, we can only uh, we can sign with only one of these. So you can lose one. Don't do it, but but you could. And if that happens, you can get your coins back. Uh, I can see my last payments. So this is all money that I received from whatever uh, transactions that uh, I had. And now let's do a transaction together. So we go to the send menu. We get an address here. We do the description. Let's say I'm paying money that I owe to uh, Kevin. So Kevin's money. And I'll put the amount that I want, 0.03. And I put the fee rate. I'm going to put a one. And then it says uh, it does automatically the coin selection. So I, I get the coin to, from tutor, tutoring uh, Anna. And then I click next. It shows me the status of the transaction. So it says not ready. To get it ready, what do I do? To finalize, to finalize this transaction, I need two more signatures. So one from the green cold card that I'm gonna sign now. Green cold card, it shows here and it's, it's validating here. As you can see, it shows me on the screen that is processing and it tells me to check my device. And it says, OK to send. I'll check the, the address. I go and I click Next. And it tells me to wait a little bit. Signing. And that's done. It's signed by Green Cold Card. And now I need to sign with the Gray Cold Card. So it tells me again to do the same process. It's validating right now. So it shows me it's OK to send. Again, I see the address, the network fee. I continue and then I click Enter. Then it's signing, saving. OK, everything seems good. The status now says it's ready to go. So I just I can check whatever I want. I can check the coin I spent, the payment, the change. But I'm just going to click on broadcast. Broadcasting the, the transaction and it gives me the OK. Everything is done correctly, and I'm going to see it on the home page as an unconfirmed payment uh, to be sent. So, yes, this is very easy to use. So, hope you guys try it and uh, let me know how it goes. Thank you.